The following is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, third chapter, text number 17, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on September 22nd, 1972, in Los Angeles. Translation In the twelfth incarnation, the Lord appeared as Dhanvantari, and in the thirteenth, he allured the atheists by the charming beauty of a woman and gave nectar to the demigods to drink. Mm -hmm. This is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> to have very charming wife is not very good. <laughs> and in your country you have got all charming wives. Uh, Chanakya Pandit says that there are four kinds of enemies in family life. These are very experienced person. He says, Mata uh, Shatru, and family means we live with father, mother, wife, children. This is family. In your country, Family does not mean father and mother, only wife and children. But in our country, according to Vedic civilization, family is a large conception. Father, mother, brother, sister, sister's son, brother's son. If there is difficulty, one has to sue. <clears throat> so on the whole, father, mother, wife and children consisting of family. Now, Chanaka Pandit says, in the family there are enemies. How? Rīna karta pita sattru. Chanaka Pandit says, a father who is a great debtor, he is enemy. Because the son inherits the money of the father, Similarly, the law is that if the father dies a debtor, the son becomes responsible to pay the debts. That is the law, Mani Swami. I do not know what is law here. I don't think the son is responsible for paying the debts of father. But in India, that is the law. Hmm? One uh, big barrister, Mr. C. R. Das, his father died insolvent, making death. So when he became very rich, he called all the creditors and paid pie to pie. That my father was later to take this. That is the obligation. Therefore, Chanakapandi says the father who dies a debtor, he is an enemy. Reen karta pita shatru. Reen means debts. Karta means one who has uh, committed so many debts and dies. The father, instead of enjoying father's property, he has to pay the father's debts. So therefore that father is called enemy. Reen karta pita shatru. Mata shatru dicharini. And mother, if he if she marries for the second time, she is enemy. Rina Katta Pita Sattru, Mata Sattru Dicharim. Rupavati Vajja Sattru. And very beautiful wife, she is enemy. And Putra Sattru Apandita. And if the son is a full rascal, he is enemy. Four kinds of enemy in the family. So, uh, I think I have uh, spoken about my own life. Uh, uh, you know that I was a married man. So after being married, I, I did not like my wife. <laughs> Somehow or other I did not like. 
I, I must say, she, she is very faithful, very everything, everyone faithful. But I did not like some of her. So I was preparing for next marriage. Next marriage. Because in India, at that time it was allowed. A man can marry more than one wife. Now the law is there. So my father, he was a saintly person. See, he called me one day and said, My dear boy, you are trying to marry again. I request you, don't do that. You do not like your wife. There is a great fortune for you. <laughs> so I gave up that idea, many. <laughs> yes. So now I am realizing my father's blessing. Yes. That if I would have been too much attached to my wife, then I could not have come to this position. That's a fact. So, by ethical point of view, from spiritual point of view, uh, to become too much attached to wife is an imp- impediment for spiritual advance. Uh, therefore, it is said that a man, apayat suram. Onyan mohinnan mohitam sriya. Those who are sura, demigods, they were given the nectar. And others, others means opposite number of sura or osura, the atheist, or the demons, they were enchanted by the beautiful form of mohini. Krishna's another incarnation is female, mohini, charming. So much charming that even Lord Shiva was after the girl. Lord Shiva, he is supposed to be dhira, but he became char and he was after that girl. So when Krishna, Krishna is already beautiful, but when he takes the shape of an woman, how beautiful he became. We can just imagine. Uh, woman are naturally beautiful. They are called fair sex. So, uh, uh, mohinya. So this mohini, this attractive feature of woman, is advantage and disadvantage. It requires simply handling, uh, then it is advantage. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu played this play, Mohini role, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was playing drama. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very beautiful. He took the part of this Mohini Mood. And uh, she was dancing with the uh, pot of nectar. So all the devotees, they uh, offer their obeisances because Mohini Murti means God's incarnation. So, my dear Lord, your this Murti, this form, this charming form, is somewhere uh, Rakhasini. Rakhasini means, uh, what is called, witches or the female demon. And somewhere you are goddess of fortune. So the why, uh, never mind, Generally, beautiful wife means everyone's wife is beautiful. Uh, unless one sees his wife beautiful, he cannot become a householder. You see? I think I did not see my wife. 
beautiful. Therefore, I had to take sanna. <laughs> but uh, uh, generally, everyone sees his wife beautiful. There was a great poet in Bengal, Bankim Chand. He used to say that everyone has got right to say his wife beautiful. That means the wife may be beautiful or not beautiful to other side, but the husband says it must be beautiful. Otherwise, there cannot be husband. Huh? So the, the fact is that our householder life is not a, a, a platform of being attracted by woman or by wife. No. Wife is not accepted uh, for sex satisfaction and being attracted by her. No. Therefore, wife is called dharma potni. Uh, dharma potni. Dharma potni means a religious wife. Or husband and wife should execute religious life, spiritual cultivation. That is the purpose of becoming householder, girastāsraṁ. Not that I become attracted by wife and I become absorbed in simply sex relation and forget my real duty, Krishna consciousness. That is dangerous. So generally, if one's wife becomes very beautiful, he forgets his real duty, Krishna consciousness, and he simply becomes a pet servant of the wife. That is it. Therefore, Rupa Goswami says, anasaktasya viśvayān jatharam upajanyata. One should not be attracted for sex life. Jatharam upajanyata. But does it mean that husband and we not have sex? No. Jatharam, as it is required. That is required means, well, sex life with wife should be performed only for begetting a Krishna conscious child. Nothing more. No more at all. That life is better. And that life means not only better, that is the ideal life. Wife and husband, combination, both should make progress in Krishna consciousness. Uh, Women, they are generally uh, uh, equipped with the qualities of passion and ignorance. And man also, maybe, but man can be elevated to the platform of goodness. Uh, woman cannot be. Uh, <coughs> woman cannot be. Therefore, if the husband is nice and the woman follows, woman becomes faithful and chaste to the husband, then their both life becomes separate. There are three qualities of nature. Satta, Raja, Tama. So, uh, Raja, Tama, generally, uh, that is the quality of a woman. And man can become to the uh, platform of goodness. Therefore, initiation. Uh, Brahminical uh, symbolic representation is given to the man, not to the woman. Uh, this is the theory. Therefore, uh, the combination should be that the husband should be first class devote, Krishna Khan. And one man should be, woman should be devoted to the husband, faithful. 
so that she would help the husband to make progress in Krishna consciousness. Then their both life is successful. Otherwise, if the husband simply becomes captivated by the charming beauty of woman and engages himself in the sex life, then his life is lost, and the woman they are less intelligent. They are unless they are guided by a proper husband, her life is also lost. <clears throat> so those who are uh, not demigods. Then here it is a apayat suran, sura or sura. Sura, those who are not developed to Krishna consciousness, they are asura. So every husband should be a sura. Sura means devotee. And every woman should be religious. Religious means to uh, become chaste, faithful to the husband. And the husband should become a devote. Then both of them will uh, make progress in Krishna consciousness, and that is the perfection of life. So here it is very clearly described the anyan uh, mohino, mohini, uh, mohinyam, striya, uh, by the formation. Uh, so we should not be uh, attracted, but generally people are attracted. The whole world, the material world is going on that the woman is attractive for man and the man is attractive for woman. Uh, this is the general platform of attraction between man and woman. And when they are united by such attraction, then they become more materially not. And then they are after Pungsang Sriyami Thuni Bhavamita Tayur Mitho Didayaganti Mahu Atah Giryat Chetra Sutapta Vittai Janasya Mohoyam Ahang Mameti. Our material bondage is due to an illusion. What is that illusion? That I am this body, the heart of the I am this body, and anything which is required for this body or which I possess for the comfort of this body, that is mine. Both of them are illusion, because I am not this body. I am so aham brahmasmi. But the illusion is everyone is thinking I am this body. I am Indian, I am American, I am white, I am black, I am Brahmi, I am Sudra, I am this, I am that. This is illusion. Therefore, the Vedic system is to save one from this illusion. The first stage of life is brahmachari, to understand the value of life and strictly without any association with Oman. That is called brahmachari. Strictly. So, the whole Vedic system is to convince one that you are not this body and anything you possess in relationship with your body they are all illusion. You are spirit soul, part and parcel of God, Krishna. Therefore, your duty is somewhere or other come out of this entanglement of the bodily concept of life and bodily possession. Come out, be free, Brahma Bhuta. Now your position is Jiva Bhuta. Jiva Bhuta means you are thinking that I am a product of this material world. All scientists, all philosophers, they are the same concept, that I am this body. 
Beyond this body there is nothing. All big, big professors, scientists. So after this body is finished, everything is finished. But actually that is not a fact. From Bhagavad Gita you understand that Najayate Namriyati, the spirit soul is never born, never dies. It is the body, material body, that takes birth and dies. But spirit soul remains. Dehantaram prati, tatha dehantaram prati. He transmigrates to another body, just like we are transmigrating from one body to another. There are so many children here. Now, they are doing so many things, foolish, but we enjoy, because we know that this body is foolish body. Nobody graduates. If, if a child does something which uh, not to be done, uh, just like uh, most children, they are chewing their thumb. But if you do that, that cannot be allowed. Uh, because your body is different, and his body is different. So these uh, rascals, they do not understand the simple truth that this body is different from the my uh, uh, from the body of a youth or a boy. They are different bodies. Uh, they, are, they are thinking the body is growing. Uh, the body is not growing. Body is changing. Uh, just like in cinema, photograph, you see somebody is moving, but that is not moving. That is different body, changing the photograph. But because it is shown so swiftly, we see that one body. As soon as the machine is stopped, the body is stopped. Immediately. We have been experienced. So these bodies are different bodies. Otherwise, a child does so many things foolishly, and the elderly boy or you, he does not do so. Because the body is different. Why do they not understand? This is called ignorance. The body is different. Similarly, as uh, everyone has got past, present, and future, you are all young men, you had your past, you had a child's body, a boy's body, and future you'll get a, a body like me, aged. Uh, similarly, I had my past, I was I had a youth's body, now I've got aged body, then why not future, another body? This is very common conclusion. And it is given, it is confirmed, not that we are imagining, it is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, tatha dehantaram prapti, as the child is changing body to boyhood, boy is changing body to youthhood, dehina smin jatha dehi kaumanang jauvanang jara, and the youth is changing body to uh, old age body. Similarly, the old also will change the body. Again, we'll get a small baby's body, and again, again. That is the way of nature. So, every one of us, spirit, soul, part and parcel of God, now we are embarrassed due to our ignorance. So when this ignorance is moved, we become enlightened. Uh, that is called brahma Self-realization, spiritual realization, brahma bhuta prasannātmā. Nā sochati nā kāṅkṛti samasar bhīsu bhūteśu madhu bhakti lavati parā. So without being uh, brahma bhuta, that I am spirit soul, Krishna consciousness does not become very perfect. If we are in the bodily concept of life, then it is the other difficult. It will take time because unless you come to the platform to understand that you are not this body, you are spirit soul, 
the actual devotional service does not begin. But to the neophyte student, the chance is given to develop this uh, devotional service, sabanam, kirtanam, smaranam, archanam, bandhanam, dasam. The method is uh, by constantly being engaged in devotional service, uh, one becomes realized so God helps him, Krishna helps him, and then he becomes a perfect liberated soul. Liberated soul means hitya uh, rupam. Now we are working under the designation of this body. Everyone is working uh, under this designation of this body. Uh, when we become above the designation of the body, uh, that is our real constitution. So, first of all, to realize that I am not this body, and the next stage is that I am spirit soul, part and parcel of Krishna. Therefore, as part and parcel is meant for giving service to the whole, therefore my constitutional position is to serve Krishna. That is perfection of life. Thank you.